Arabic Calligraphy Project by Hajra Meeks. So today we will be doing an original project. There are no Art Nouveau references for this, but all of your practice from previous pieces should help you make a beautiful Arabic calligraphy project. If you go to my website, you'll actually see some Arabic calligraphy projects where the letters are actually made with nothing but flowers and there are no outlines, but that can be a bit intimidating to start out with. So today what I'm going to do is the floral forms will be within the Arabic calligraphy name, but there will still be some line outlines. So this is a bit easier. So the first thing you want to do is find um, someone who knows Arabic or go to Google Translate and maybe try to write your name or somebody else's name in Arabic. Sometimes this works and sometimes it doesn't. So your best bet is to check it with somebody who can read Arabic. Um, so what I've done here is I've drawn um, the name Elijah um, on a piece of tracing paper and because it's very exact I'm going to now transfer it onto my watercolor paper instead of drawing it on my watercolor paper directly. This will keep me from messing up my watercolor paper with extra pencil lines. Um, you want to make sure your pencil lines are very light so you can even go back with an eraser like I'm doing and pick up the extra pencil line with a kneaded eraser. It's very important that you do your drawing separately for most projects for this reason because it will keep your paints from getting muddy. And that's how I use tracing paper. I use it to do my drawings and then to transfer it. And so it's more like transfer paper. So now I'm going to pull out my watercolor pencils. These are my these are my Faber-Castell Albrecht Durer watercolor pencils. And I'm going to choose a limited color scheme as usual. And this time I'm choosing brown and two different kinds of red hues and a green. So it's very much a red and green color scheme with a little bit of brown. So I've got my magenta, my red, my brown, and um, my green. So I'm also going to now do a little bit of doodling on an extra piece of graph paper just so you can see the floral forms I'll be using. I'll be using squiggly lines, those leaves, and some flowers, and then I'm going to wet them. It doesn't really work so well on the graph paper, but it'll work better on the watercolor paper. Now you'll notice that I'm only doing edges of flowers here. And that's because you don't want to do full flowers when you are doing floral forms inside of letters. It tends to look kind of tacky. You can do a whole flower if you don't have an outline to your Arabic name, but if you're doing an outline like there is here, it actually looks more artistic and more aesthetically pleasing if you only do edges and corners of flowers and leaves and such. I'm just going to try to find a beautiful balance of the different flowers, add my leaves, then the squiggly lines, and then I'm going to come back with just a wet brush and add some water to make the color flow. I don't want to make too much color flow because it'll take the line away completely. I just want to blur the line a bit to make the color more intense and also leave some of the line behind. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm also trying to blend a little bit of the color around the edges of the letter's outline. It'll give me more of an outline to the letter than if I just decided to color in the flowers. So to explain this another way, um, what I'm also doing is blurring some of the red or the green or the orange towards the outline of the letter and it's going outside of the flower a bit. And what this does is it makes the outline of the letter look more full bodied than if I was just coloring inside the flower. Now I only do this a little bit, not too much, but it does give the illusion that there is more body to the actual letter. So now I'm just going to repeat myself. I'm going to put in purple flowers and orangish red flowers and then do the green leaves and then also the brown squiggly line which is the Nouveau element to this although of course because Art Nouveau is inspired by um, Islamic art and Eastern Mughal Persian art of different sorts this is all very much falling into the realm of an Art Nouveau inspired project and the squiggly organic lines are just a good finishing touch for that. I'm going to try to be very careful about how many flowers I have and how many leaves I have. I don't want to create a large imbalance of one color and too much or too little of one thing or another. So just weigh it with your eyes and it's just like looking at a crooked picture. You may not know exactly how to fix it in numerical terms, but you know when it looks right. So if there's too much magenta, you know you need to add a little bit more orange and vice versa. Same thing with the green. 
And what you want to keep a real light hand with is the brown squiggly line. That's probably the easiest thing to mess up with because if you add too much of that brown squiggly line, it'll make the whole letter look too muddy. You just actually want a little bit of that and because it does blur and it is brown, you don't want to have too much of it. Draw the squiggly line in, in between gaps. That's the most natural place to put it. Try not to cross over flowers when you're doing that brown squiggly line. When you come back with your wet brush, it just has water on it. And what you want to do is try to do one color at a time. So do all the magenta stuff first, and do all the orange stuff second, so on and so forth, and wash your brush in between colors so you don't muddy up the colors. And you'll notice again and again that what I'm doing is taking a little bit of the color in a flower and going outside of it and blending towards the center and towards the edge of the flower's outline. And again, this gives the flower more of a blurred edge, but it also gives me body to my letter. So what it ends up doing is it ends up making the letter look like it's some kind of painted ceramic tile floating on the paper, which is the effect we're going for. It is very similar to if you're drawing bricks, how you blend towards the center, you have a dark outline. Well, you're doing the same thing here. You take your color and you don't just color the flower, but you blend a little bit of the outside around the flower and blend it towards the center so it looks like that it's rising up out of the paper a bit. Of course, this is different than some of the examples that you'll see on my website. This is a good beginning project because even though there are no references and it's an original piece, it's very easy to do because you, you can do these floral forms even if you are intimidated by figures or people and they're actually pretty simple floral forms too but it makes a very beautiful end product that looks very professional. And you can do your own name or somebody's name um, that you know if you can read or write Arabic or know someone who does. Or you can just look up some famous phrases in Arabic on the internet and um, use those. So what you'll see for my final product is that I've done the last letter. And also, it's hard to see on here, but I've added a little gold flex as an accent. Most mobile and Persian artwork that's historical uses gold leaf and embellishment so that's totally an option if you want to take some gold or metallic paint and add that on and then you're done